everyone, it's Cedric. I am making this video for anybody who's thinking about getting a flat foot reconstructive surgery. Um, I was not able to find almost any information on the internet from people who have actually had this done. Just a, a few people. Um, and wanted to make some, some more information out there for people who are thinking about having it done. So... Um, today is day one after my surgery. Uh, I have, or had, I hopefully, um, extreme flat feet, uh, and decided after trying all kinds of orthotics, all kinds of, uh, stretching, PT, um, you know, movement therapy, kinesiology, acupuncture, uh, oh, what else? acupuncture with uh electricity involved like everything um to really work out my flat feet uh i am a competitive cyclist as well and just watched my athletic career slowly go downhill as the problems stemming from my feet um stacked up and, and really took me out of an active life um i also own a construction company so you know, working in the field became more and more difficult, and that just, you know, all that stacked up just kind of basically led to me deciding to get the surgery. Um, I've had my my flat foot condition since I was like four or five years old. It became apparent, and my parents never, um, they never did anything. I had some other health problems, so I think they just didn't want to, you know, do another year of of being out of it and and struggling, um, having a kid struggle, so, um, and then I grew up, and it just never seemed like the right time to take, you know, almost a year off to do both feet, and the sur surgery sounded really scary, and really difficult, and, you know, um, just, I was like, I'll just get through it, so now I am 37 years old, and, uh, it's, it's time. So all that, all that stacking up has finally caught up with me, and this is why I decided to do, do the surgery. Um, yeah, so that's my feet. Let me turn this around, and you can see. So there's the foot. They put me in... This is not a hard cast. It's a soft cast with a kind of splint at the back. And my particular condition, let's look at the other foot first, actually. So you can, this was the worst foot that got done. So this is, this is the one we decided to do first, which still lets me, lets me free to drive and everything. But you can see my foot, it's even worse when I stand, but it is extremely, excuse me, extremely flat. See that? That's what, that's like a normal-ish arch. That's my actual, my actual arch. If we look at it from behind, behind the heel, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see how much the heel is turned in. And this just throws all my biomechanics off. All of them. So knee hurts, hip hurts, uh, back hurts all the time, and I've had uh, two herniated discs in my back over time, uh, with the possibility of more, I didn't want to continue like that, so we got that done. So, um, laying in this bed has me with hiccups, but I can tell you what they did. And this is for my particular condition. Everyone who has this condition is a little different. Some people have rigid uh, rear foot sections. Other people have um, like a flexible flat foot where they still have a little bit of, even when they're in the collapsed or pronated position, they still have a little bit of motion and they can, they can dorsiflex the foot. So you can flex the foot this way. And, uh, and still have a little bit of range of motion. And that is great. That If you have that, you know, honestly, 
really try to exhaust your physical therapy options and your strengthening options before you even think about surgery. Um, because you have the range of motion and really it's the muscles that run under here to make your arch, uh, the ones that run over top to pull your, to pull your foot into that cup position, right? So if a hand is like a foot, your foot should be kind of like this and then turned over a little bit with your, with your toes staying flat on the ground. Um, but in my case, when I am dorsiflexed all the way, I have no range of motion. I cannot, or when I'm arched all the way, when I'm consciously trying to make an arch, I have zero range of motion. I cannot dorsiflex at all this way. I stay at plus 10 degrees instead of 90, and I cannot move my foot at all to get into a flat position. So in that case, that's called a, a rigid flat foot uh, condition. That is really where the surgery is very helpful because the bones in your feet are the limiting factor. The way they lock together, or in some cases don't lock together properly, um, is what's causing you to not be able to, to achieve that full range of motion. So... Um, let me see. I wonder if I could even do it with my other foot. So let's see. If I were to... Yeah, I can't really do it. Like, if I if I turn my foot into a... a uh, into a normal arch position, that's, that's as far back as I can go. And it's, it's more apparent when somebody else is manipulating the foot. But um, that was the reason. So with this foot... What they ended up doing, to my understanding, is there are maybe two pins that run in between the small, uh, the cuboid bone and, uh, some of the other small bones in the feet that force me into an arch position. They, they force me into the position, they pin those bones together, my talonavicular joint they left alone to try and uh, keep the range of motion that I should have. You know, if I can get into this arch position properly, uh, they give you some range of motion in the tail of the navicular joint, and then you really have to stretch um, to, to soak up all of the non-motion that you have in the other small bones of your feet. And then on the other side of my foot, on the outside there, down by what would be you consider your ankle bone down here just below it they lengthen the actual column of my foot so they basically it's hard to really manipulate the camera this way but basically they opened up a space between the bones of my feet right here and pushed the entire foot forward to kind of, instead of my foot posting on my leg at, you know, plus almost 30 degrees the way it is, my foot will now be more this way. More straight and more likely to be in a normal position for an arch to form. So that is a plate and maybe six very small s screws. You're talking, um, you're talking about an an inch to half an inch size screws. And then the other two screws inside the arch are longer. And this is two separate procedures. Well, actually three. Um, it's a complex surgery. Some people will only require a milder correction. I required a very major correction. So, um, you know, don't, don't judge that uh, as, as what you would end up getting. Talk to your, your surgeon about what would be best for you. Um, they also, because I have such an extremely tight heel cord here and the Achilles tendon that runs all the way up here is very short to my gastroc, they did what is called a gastroc recession. And that, I was very much 
on the fence about doing it. I'm an athlete, a uh, sprinter. So, I, you know, this is my entire spring for sprinting here. And I was really worried that um, a gastroc recession is basically when they they cut the fascia that's back here that runs over top of all the muscle. And as that fascia cuts, they don't cut it completely. They just cut into it slightly. And as the as the fibers of that fascia come apart, it allows it to lengthen slightly. And that slight lengthening is what um, gives you enough range of motion to actually form an arch. When this is too short and too hard, um, and I have stretched the hell out of these things, like blasted them with uh, um, percussive therapy and rolled them and done everything I can to try and to try and get them longer. It's just not working. Um, you know, I was against this part of the surgery at first, and then I talked to my doctor a little bit more, and he said, look, I can't really get much of a correction if I cannot actually get you into this 90 degree position, which I can already see. If I have an arch under there, I am in a beautiful exact 90 degrees. This is just a pad. This is exactly 90. That's great. Um, I can still flex my calf. I can still feel it. It doesn't actually hurt too bad, but I am on a nerve block right now, so we'll go into that a little bit later. Um, but, yeah, we ended up doing it, the the, the gastroc recession, and he, um, he kind of put me at ease. He said, look, it's not like the, the not the old days, but I guess even a, a decade or two ago, um, now they have an endoscope that they put up there under there so they can look and see where your nerves are and what they're actually cutting. It's not cutting blind just straight across your calf. Um, so after about three months, that fascia all heals back to its newly lengthened state. And then it's really on you to actually stretch out your calf, your Achilles tendon as much as it can. It tendon doesn't really stretch exactly but you try to keep it loose and then you should have a little bit more range of motion so that's yeah that's four procedures um not something to be taken lightly but if you're the right candidate and you really need it definitely uh something to think about um also if you've never been to surgery before i have when i was a kid and i'm always really wary of surgeries they're scary to me, um, just because I am used to my body working mostly the way I want. Uh, what we ended up doing, instead of a lot of really narcotic pain medicines, is what they call a nerve block. So this is a nerve block. And what it is, is they have two nerves that run down your leg, right? This one runs down on the inside, past your knee that way, and then down your calf. And this one runs out on the outside. And that branches all in your foot and ankle and everything. So by blocking the nerve, they're delivering a little bit of numbing medicine right onto the side of the nerve. This doesn't really go so much in your bloodstream. It just hits the, hits the nerve right there and the nerve signals of pain that are coming up from my foot cannot reach my brain. Um, really amazing. Amazing kind of new medical technology, I guess. And they give you these two... Let's see if I can... I, can, I got my bed, bed sheets here. So they'll give you a bag like this. I'm going to try to open this bag. Here we go. So inside the bag, there's a little... a little control like that where you can dial the nerve block up and down which you need to talk to your doctor before you do that your anesthesiologist and then that is connected to this big ball, ball of numbing medicine so you wear that for about three days gets you past the hump of like the most painful part of the recovery from surgery and then you're on to normal pain meds so lots of ibuprofen lots of aspirin tylenol 
Um, maybe a, something a little stronger if you're still having a lot of pain. Um, and yeah, then it's just, you know, the projected recovery is maybe three weeks in this splint. And then they're probably going to switch that out for like an ankle type, uh, an ankle type boot. Or, 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 you know, something in the same shape, but just a, a hard boot uh, I'll wear. And i uh, got my trusty crutches, and I'm also getting a scooter, and, and something called an iWalk, which is a hands-free crutch that just goes right on your knee and lets you peg-leg yourself around. Um, if you're going to do both feet, I mean, this is three months to non-weight, to non-weight, or to weight-bearing, excuse me. Three months of non-weight bearing, and after that I can weight bear. And then it's physical therapy. So really, it's four and a half, call it five months, before I'm back to real full strength, hopefully, with everything. Um, calf should be ready, basically, to go in three, three, three and a half months. Um, but... Yeah, you got to get around for a while. So all those other mobility options, other than the crutches, which are great, um, really come into play and are really worth spending the two fifty to three hundred dollars it'll take to to get a scooter and one of those um, hands free crutches, just to give yourself some options. Um, so I'm doing this foot now. And this is May of 2021. Um, hopefully by September, I am back at it at work really excited about that i have a lot of non on my feet planning and stuff to do for my business so that's what i'll be doing um till then and then we have like a couple of projects that i have to be on site for and be you know up and physical and then hopefully in february of 2022 we'll go and do this foot, which still needs a correction, but it is not as major as the other one. Um, yeah, you can see. You can just see. If I were to... This is how my foot usually is. Completely, you know, almost 30 to 35 degrees off axis of the rest of the leg. And just totally pronated over. Um, yeah, this has been terrible. So I hope that helps someone thinking about this surgery. You know, I was really hesitant and I ran from this for a long time, but I have the feeling that this is going to be um, something great, life-changing for me that I probably should have done earlier. The pain, you know, we'll see what it resolves into, but I can tell you just from, you know, one day after, I can already tell that my foot is in a much more stable position. I can feel, you know, as much as I can feel with a nerve block on, um, that my foot is in a properly arched position. And it's, you know, the first two hours that I had this cast on, my leg got so tired. Like, just from being in a normal position where my muscles um, are not used to being, my leg muscles just got very tired and were twitching and, and everything. Um, but that's the way anatomically things should work, and I just gotta, um, really work on it in physical therapy and, and hope for the best here, but this, this solution is not a solution, this is not a sustainable way of, uh, of living into my old age, so I really wanted to do this now, while I am young and able to heal a little bit, um, if you're further along, I still say it's probably, never too late because these degenerative changes that happen up the chain of your leg into your back just keep getting worse from my experience. Um, so I don't think there's ever a too late. It's just a question of how long it's going to take you to recover. You know, does that fit into your lifestyle and, and how you're going to make it work. But, um, yeah, I hope that helps some of you and I will be here recovering for the next three months. So, slip uh your boy a dm or or something a comment whatever you want um down below and and give me your thoughts and if you're if you're out there i hope this helps you uh make an informed decision about maybe getting your own surgery because like i said there's not much information about this type of procedure out there um 
I can list. Oh, also, yeah, the 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 um the procedures they did are uh, arthrodesis on two of them on the bones inside the foot, lateral column lengthening on the outside of the foot, and a gastroc recession. I think it's called the Strayer procedure on the back of the leg. So I will have a scar here. Probably two small scars here and a scar on the outside. But I don't really care because <laughs> my foot will hopefully be in a better position. And uh, I'm very much used to having scars and, and chafing and rubbing and my flat arches all over my feet. So I don't really care what it looks like. It just has to work. You know? And if you're trying to be out there and look cute, I guarantee you a foot that works looks a lot cuter than a flat foot that has no scars. So, hope that helps. See you guys later.